Alrighty. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Composing in Evolving Spaces. This is a recap of episodes actually 17 from a few weeks ago and 18 just completed. As we re-entered this episode, we reflected that we've had uh, a long hiatus in our stream uh, and basic conclusions that we came up with are Things seem to be going all over the place. Multiple mixed feelings, which also result in multiple mixed healings about issues that are going on. And basically to just keep moving forward with what is in front of us that we've already committed to and be informed by the results as we move along. So the thing that we completed uh, as a result of episode 17 is what we called the objects in 3D primer. And to show you that real quick, we're starting a new course that we're teaching or helping teach called Meta Entrepreneurship in a Metaverse platform called Second Life. And one of the issues is that the students are going to be charged with designing and building products and selling, marketing and selling them inside of this metaverse platform, which has an economy and a marketplace. So we had designed the outline for the primer. This was for the faculty to uh, become familiar with both beginning and intermediate and a hint at advanced building objects in 3D or we call it objects in space. So uh, we had several projects making a working globe that rotates at the speed of the earth. Um, making a flag, uh, uploading personal pictures, and creating original personal content in the world. We learned a couple tips about rotating scripts and glow effects, uh, sliding animation effects, and uh, a fun thing, uh, we made a flying carpet. We, oops, I'm running into things all over the place. So we did that. And there's Many, many interesting things besides that. For example, why can you see through this cube, but it's solid all the way around? So, so we did that. So we did that. That was successful, and we'll be using that in several weeks to actually teach. So that, that, that's basically the recap for um, uh, episode 17 made objects in space display images. We used our multiple technology set. We used our whiteboard images. We used our smartphone to take pictures. We used our Google Docs. Uh, and then we used our building skills and uh, scripting skills and, and 3D modeling skills. Then well, that brings us today, which was four weeks later. And we're doing, uh, we're doing something called visioning, visioning sessions with people. And part of the visioning process that we use is to uh, clear the mind with what we, uh, with some of our work from our music video. For example, this uh, new light one here. And we would have them jump out to YouTube, watch the video, and jump back into Second Life and do their, and then continue our guided facilitation process. So, we're doing a second visioning process next week. And the challenge was instead of working with three people with a lot of advanced preparation, uh, which culminated in one hour episode, now they want 30 people in 30 minutes. So this will be a fun challenge. But one of the things we decided to test is instead of jumping out to YouTube and back to Second Life, is it feasible? Is it feasible? In world to have in world vision and sound boards. And what we mean by that is can we substitute objects in 3D, like we just looked at a minute ago, for traditional YouTube animated texture and animation videos? Can we avoid sending people outside the 3D environment and bringing them back, which can be an interruption, especially if you only have 30 minutes total? And the issues are music is limited to 29 seconds of sound for the upload. Well, our original music was. 60 seconds and 80 seconds, so we have to cut it, we have to truncate it brutally, find a nice place to chunk it. 
And then it's extra work to convert a video to an animated GIF. What's an animated GIF, you say? Well, for example, uh, this is one of those uh, videos that we wanted to summarize, which looks like this, this, this one here. This is a beautiful video. It's got a building four-part music background, four parts of animation. But sadly, 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 it's a minute 20 and we're only allowed 30 seconds. So how do we truncate that? How do we try to represent an image? And we've tested two things and we're still thinking about what we're likely to use. But let's take the one that we have here. This is a brutally truncated animation, GIF animation of that video. It's only 11 frames, but it shows the opening, the, the, the middle, and the, and the close. Uh, and then this is a fixed screenshot that just is much higher resolution. And this is how much music we were able to get out of that. Here it goes. So the, the question in our mind is, is it worth it? Or do we just send them to YouTube? This only shows the middle image when in the original video, there are three images and then they are all overlaid. Over here is uh, an opening. This is the sound that we heard a minute ago. Or do we show them this slightly fuzzy looking GIF animation of it while it's playing in the background? And there's no synchronization between the animation and the sound, unlike the video. It's just, it sort of drive, it drives, it drives one of our committee members nuts. Everything is exactly synchronized in here. So nevertheless, through a lot of work through using uh, taking screenshots, using our editor, using a, an animator, and using a wonderful tool, uh, which we recommend if you want to experiment with uh, making your own. This guy here, Miss, Mr. Monk. Oh, come on. We were just there a minute ago. Oh, I know why it's good. There it is, this guy. So anyway, you upload a GIF or a video and it generates all these, uh, what you need in order to make it work in, in Second Life. While we're at it, let's fix that one little link. Man. This is what it's like for us right now. This is what it's like. This is what it's like. Everything is wildly going all over the place and we'll fix that later. So anyway, anyway, our ideas for next time are to go ahead and set out the image and sound boards uh, in situ. Fancy word for where we're going to use them. This is in our home space, our skybox right here, our little studio. Uh, we are what we like is that we got it to work. We tested the idea and we have a, a two working versions. We have a static image board and we have a animated image board. And believe me, we tried fat more than 11 screenshots, but boy, is it get fuzzy. And even with only 11 screenshots split up across one page, it's it's not pretty. 
uh, what they what the screen what what's actually on there what you're actually seeing is this this is an image and each one of these little frames is being shown sequentially on that uh, screen in front of us so every time this changes that means it's going from here to here to here to here and the you can only get the total size is fixed so the more frames you put in there the smaller they get the more you put in here the smaller we get we had we had 3,000 in there and it was just it was hilarious <laughs> but it, it just was a white gray blur so we're not real happy with this so I guess we could say an idea to next time is um, uh, test for test for higher image higher resolution so for example if we only used um, I, I know you're deeply interested in this so I'm showing it to you if we if we if we said well that was that was 11 but could I fit one two three maybe six maybe six frames and they'd be a lot bigger in there six frames could I could I could I use it? Could I get a six frames? Could I do that? And, and I would have to generate that using um, our video editor. And I'll show you quickly what we did for that one that we're looking at here. What we literally did was take the video, throw it into the and mark off places to take a snapshot every five seconds or every two seconds. And we decided how many snapshots to make just well, by estimating it after time. So all of these um, little orange flags is where we took a, sc a screenshot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and we ended there another one we tried every five seconds so we'd have to conceptually divide our video up into six ish frames and then have only those be displayed in world so that's 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 doable so that's that's a good thing to yeah and i guess the other you know actually practice and deliver the the consortium visioning session but one thing we did complete make sure it gives sales credit we did complete the objects in 3d primer class so shout outs to silent lurker and steady worker thank you we appreciate you do come back next time to see what happens do take care do come back and do keep on streaming.